Hi everyone, welcome back to the garden. It's one of those days here where spring might technically be here. When the sun's out, you can almost believe it. But as soon as it goes behind a cloud, you're definitely reminded that it's not really t-shirt weather just yet. Max and Remy have been running around like crazy sausages. Max has gone back inside to sunbathe. So today I'm outside with Remy, just looking at a few of the tropical style plants I grow here. And I want to give you a quick update on the condition they're in now, the results of the bad winter we've just had, and also a few of the care tips I'll be using over the next couple of months, where hopefully we'll see some growth, things finally starting to move again after the long cold winter. That's the hope anyway. As Remy gets to work then, shredded down organic matter, ready for composting. I think first we'll have a look at the Muzabaju, the hardy Japanese fibre banana. And as you can see over here, overall things don't look great in this section. A lot of supposedly hardy plants definitely have taken a bit of a hit this winter, and formiums will be one of them. As you can see, there's a lot of brown growth there, but with those, I'll simply just pull out anything that's brown and damaged, and I'm sure the plants will bounce back. But when it comes to Muzabaju, this is what you're looking at. This was quite a big plant last year, into its third year, but now you can see it's pretty much been reduced to this small stump here. The shooter stem is around a foot and a half, 40 centimeters tall, and it was a lot bigger last year. But that's the result of not entirely protecting it this winter. You can, with your protection, build a full-on enclosure around it, fill it with straw, and that does get you a bit of extra protection, but this winter I just used fleece. And unfortunately, it got very cold. I'll show you here, the top of it is mushy. But I'm not too worried about these. At the end of the day, I don't need this plant here to be really tall. There's plenty of other plants in the background there, but I did want to keep a bit of height. So touching the shooter stem there, it does feel firm somewhere around there. So what I'll probably do is just chop it off somewhere around there for now. And then as things warm up, take it right down to where it's firm. And hopefully a few weeks of sunshine and just start to see the new rollers pushing through. Ultimately, Muzabaju, they are a very tough plant. Unfortunately, if you had a younger plant, the temperatures that we've seen last year might have completely wiped it out. But if it's anything like this size or bigger, then chances are that even if that shooter stem is mushy right down to the ground, there's a good chance that it will come back from the base in spring. Fingers crossed anyway, all we could do with is some real spring weather and that roller will start pushing through the middle. So hopefully with this plant, all is not lost and we'll see some new growth very soon. When it comes to euphorbias, it's a bit of a mixed bag, but this wolf NEI is probably the most colorful plant in the garden. Untouched by the cold, it really does look stunning. I'm sure Remy agrees, but others haven't fared quite as well. Some of the smaller, more decorative euphorbias are definitely showing a bit of damage, but I'd like to think as things warm up again, a bit of selective pruning and they'll soon bounce back. And on that same note, we've got here at the back of the border, Euphorbia Frampton Fatty. This is a beautiful plant, generally goes quite low, but here I've got it at the back of a border and it's scrambling its way up that fence. Overall, it does look green. There's some parts of the plant that have died away, but I won't cut those back until things warm up a little bit more. I'm not concerned about the red leaves. That is just a characteristic stress result. As soon as it gets too cold, that's what they do. But again, this is a plant that will bounce back with a bit of careful pruning in about a month or so. Euphorbia mellifera, it definitely hasn't taken the cold as well. As you can see, the majority of the plant is brown. And realistically, I would chop this plant right back to get any kind of growth out of it. You can see if you're looking there, a lot of the stems are actually blackened, so there's no chance of those coming back. A good chunk of this plant is completely wiped out. But here, in my own situation, I'm not too worried because that plant was actually used as a bit of a filler plant. I don't know if you can see here, but I've got three trachycarpus. One, two there, and the third is just tucked in the back of the border there. So that mellifera was essentially a bit of a filler plant to give plenty of green foliage while the trachycarpus sized up. It's definitely done that. Realistically, I might either take it out completely or chop it right back. And that way it buys me another year, the trachycarpus can fill out without having to compete too much with the euphorbia. If you grow euphorbia mellifera, then this winter might have done it in. But personally, I wouldn't be put off euphorbias completely. I choose something that's a little bit tougher to replace it. Mellifera is definitely a nice plant. The honey scent from the flowers is beautiful, but there's other varieties that can take the cold and do the same thing equally well. A good example of an alternative is this, Euphorbia John Phillips. This is an incredibly vigorous euphorbia. It's got the same beautiful honey scent when it flowers, 
but the growth on this, it really does look pristine most winters. Sure, it's taken a bit of damage this winter with it being so cold, but this plant will grow back again incredibly quickly. To give you an idea of the growth rate, as you can see, this is already quite a large shrub. This started as a rooted cutting. I got it from Craig at Grow Paradise in 2020. And by just a year later, it was already a nice mound. And now about a year and a half on, as you can see, it's definitely got some size to it. So if you're gonna plant one of these, definitely leave enough room. But certainly, if you're looking for a tough plant that straddles that line between exotic and jungle with that tropical vibe, but still doesn't need a lot of care, this is a great choice. From that beast for plant then to this one here. This is a diminutive Euphorbia mercenites. And here I use it as a kind of ground cover, scrambling over the rocks in what will be my fiber area when I get onto it. This beautiful plant has the same kind of lime green acid coloring. It really is a lovely plant. And as you can see, it's untouched by the cold this winter. Definitely highly recommended. When it comes to Scheffleris, as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, this Rhododendrifolia looks pretty much pristine. In fact, I think it's fair to say the birds have caused more damage than the winter has. So that's a plant incredibly tough, proven very hardy here this winter, but others haven't fared quite as well. I bought this beautiful Scheffleris as a Taiwaniana, and as you can see, hopes were actually high leading into this winter because it actually had berries on it. Very excited to have an unusual form of this plant beautiful leaves on it but then this winter happened and this is what I'm left with. I don't think hope is entirely lost because if you look there between all the weeds and everything else you can see there's actually a bit of green growth so I'm hopeful this plant will grow back from the stem. Now at this stage is there really anything I can do? No there's not a lot I can do but with the weather warming up I'm sure this plant will bounce back. Where it chooses to grow back in the stem is anyone's guess. But personally, I don't like to chop things back too early. While there's still a risk of freezing nights and cold, I think that you, by exposing any more of the stem, it can actually get more frost damage, it can die back further. So for anything like this, we're not 100% sure about it. My number one tip would be just leave it alone and see what comes back from it. With the Scheffler, it really is frustrating that it's been cut back so hard. But ultimately, as long as a plant survives, it'll just end up having multiple trunks. It'll be a branching plant, it'll have a bigger canopy, and I'll get to enjoy even more of the foliage. So that's me trying to be optimistic. This plant won't grow how I want it to, but it'll grow in its own way, and hopefully it'll be a beautiful addition to the garden regardless. Remy's currently investigating a plant that the future doesn't look quite as bright for. This is my Scheffler swelliensis, or at least what's left of it. I remember looking at this plant last spring, saying how seeing the growth come alive is one of my favorite moments in spring. I don't think that'll happen this year. As you can see, unfortunately, the whole plant was completely burnt, toasted by the extreme cold we had. And I think this is the issue with collecting plants with growing varieties that don't really have proven hardiness in the UK. And this is why I mentioned that point in my last video. It's too easy to get carried away when you're growing plants like Scheffler to collect them all, to have every single variety in your garden, even when some like this are definitely probably a step too far for our northern climate. But will it bounce back? I'd like to think so. It's probably unlikely. I really hope it does because it's such a beautiful plant. And again, it's one of those that I really counted on for the canopy effect. But ultimately, I won't completely write them off because last year was such a tough year for a lot of these plants. The heat in the summer made it really challenging for plants like Scheffler to grow. Then autumn caused everything to burst into life. And unfortunately, when it goes from growing to straight up freezing cold, this is what's happened. So like the last one, I'll leave it to it. And if it wants to come back, it will. If it doesn't, then lesson learned. Ultimately, will it stop me trying experimental, unusual plants in my garden? Probably not, but that's my choice. When it comes to tree ferns, I did wrap the top foot of trunk of most of my plants. So I'm pretty sure that with the temperatures we got, the plants themselves will survive. But how they look right now is definitely a completely mixed bag. This one here, this is a young plant, tucked in against my brick shed, it had a couple layers of fleece over on the coldest nights. And you can probably see there, as a result, it definitely looks mostly green. This one looks pretty great compared to most of the plants, which kind of have this vibe going on. As you can see, a lot of the fronds are brown, they're bent over, they've completely been fried by the cold, 
blown around by the wind, the plants don't look great at all. And unfortunately, that is the result of the weather conditions that we had. It was just simply too cold for the front to stay green here. They generally have a limit of around minus three to minus five, but it's not really a black and white rule. Sometimes you can have a night that dips to minus five, minus six, and the fronds, for whatever reason, are just fine. Other times you can have a freezing fog like we had on some nights, and it zaps them even at minus three. So as you can see, they do look pretty rough. If you're planting a Dixonia Antarctica tree fern, counting on it being an evergreen plant, then you're definitely hoping that the winter's gonna be a mild one, or at least not too cold. Because when cold like this comes, this is likely what you're gonna be looking at. But all hope is not lost. These plants are actually incredibly tough. I know we had quite an extended duration of cold, but we only saw down to minus seven. So I am hopeful, optimistic that these beautiful plants will bounce back. I would be disappointed if I lost any of these magnificent tree ferns. They are definitely one of the centerpieces to my garden. But what I'll be doing in terms of care is just leaving them well alone. Don't chop the fronds off too early leave them on it until the new fronts start pushing through then if you want to chop them off go for it but until then probably the number one thing that you can do is make sure that these trunks don't completely dry out sure when it's freezing you don't want to be watering them but as it's getting milder if there isn't a lot of rain i know it's going to rain this week but if there isn't a lot of rain then give the whole trunk a quick spray down that's the best thing that you can do because this spring looks like it could end up being one of the driest on record again these plants are more at risk of dying due to drought than they are of the cold damage but hopefully very soon these brown fronds can be chopped off and these plants will be displaying a beautiful crown of vivid lime green foliage hopefully so as you can see from that selection of plants this winter's definitely caused a lot more damage than any of the recent winters has and if you just got into tropical style gardening last summer or the year before, then you definitely have my sympathy. It's not always this difficult. In a normal or mild winter, so many of the plants I've just shown you would come through green, healthy, and ready to start growing again come spring. This winter, on the other hand, things definitely look a little bit rougher. Sure, it's been fine for the Trachyapis fortunii and the really hardy exotics. We only saw minus seven here, but like I said before, it's not just the temperature reach, but the duration that's really causing damage. So as a result, a lot of the plants I would have thought as hardy have definitely taken a hit this winter. But overall, I'm optimistic that some of these plants will bounce back, hopefully most of them. And that's the note that I want to end on. Things might look bleak in your garden right now. A lot of the plants might look like bare twigs. Scheffler, Tetrapanax, Musabaju, even the tree ferns look completely rough and brown but time is a great healer just because these plants are rough right now doesn't mean you should write them off and the two best things that i would say that you can do at this stage is firstly be patient don't rip a plant out just because it looks dead right now there's a good chance it might bounce back and also don't forget about watering the tree ferns at this time of year those plants they've really struggled they've had the foliage desiccated by the cold winds the drying spells we've had in the middle they really want some water so if you've got a tree fern in your garden and the weather doesn't like it's going to freeze over the next few nights give it a good spray down it'll really appreciate it so thanks for watching this video just a quick look around the garden at some of the tropical style plants and how they really still look right now if you're looking to plant any of these yourself then this might give you an idea of what they look like after a really cold winter but thank you very much for watching as always if you've got any comments leave them in the section below i'll see you next time see you later